We tried going zero sugar for one week. Here's what happened. But first, what is sugar? Sugar is a blanket name for a class of carbohydrates that include lactose, fructose, and sucrose. Sugar has integrated itself heavily into modern culture, especially with the rise of prepackaged food. And a lot of times it's hiding in things you normally wouldn't think about, such as coffee and condiments. 200 years ago, the average American ate only two pounds of sugar a year. And today, the average American consumes almost 152 pounds of sugar in one year. That's three pounds a week, more than your great-great-grandparents would consume in a total year. Now we've done low sugar in the past, such as eating only chicken and broccoli, but in this episode, we'll be trying to do it using a variety of tasty meals, all the while staying sugar-free and we'll be doing it from two different perspectives, the family man and the bachelor. Here we go, wish us luck. Sugar is the most popular ingredient added to foods in the United States. New Hampshire Department of Health. Okay, so we got the first meal of the day, which is gonna be breakfast, of course. I'm keeping the breakfast pretty simple. I'm going with four whole eggs, four slices of turkey bacon, and one cup of oatmeal. With my oatmeal, I would usually have some fruit, maybe add some milk, give it a little sweetness, but can't have that. So what I'm gonna be doing is adding a little bit of unsweetened almond milk and some cocoa. But that's just a good case in point that there's always gonna be options available and being restricted in some kind of ways always gets you a little bit more creative. Whenever you switch up the way you eat, it's a good idea to go to the grocery store and make sure you buy the foods that are gonna fit within your new eating habits. Case in point, we're going zero sugar, so we wanna go to the grocery store and pick out foods that are gonna make sure we stay strict. First off, it's going to be meat. Meat is a very good source of fats and proteins and it's going to contain zero sugar. But of course, there are some meats that have added sugars in them, specifically the ones that are going to contain a lot of barbecue sauce. So you want to make sure you buy just the simple one ingredient meat, either it be chicken, steak, ground beef, whatever it is, it's going to be an easy way to get in a lot of nutrients, protein, and fats without any kind of sugars. Second, you want to make sure you have some kind of greens in your diet, and we're going to be going with dark greens. They're higher in fiber and less in the amount of sugars. So if you go with a little bit more of the brightly colored vegetables, you're going to contain a little bit Bit more sugars. We're going to be avoiding fruit and yes fruit is very nutritious and it also has a lot of vitamins and minerals but it also has a lot of fructose too and for the sake of this challenge we're going to be going zero fruit. Eggs is another way of getting in a lot of protein and fats. They're very nutrient dense so we're not cutting out eggs but one thing we are cutting out is going to be milk. Now milk contains a lot of sugar unfortunately and yes it has a lot of protein but we're going to stay away from lactose. Oats is another great way of getting a lot of complex carbohydrates without going any sugar, but you have to be cautious because there are some oatmeals that contain added sugars to make them taste better. So we're just gonna be sticking with simple plain oats. And I just wanna mention something real quick. Now, of course, there's different types of sugars. There's monosaturides, disaturides, and polysaturides. Some are more simple and some are more complex. Polysaturides are a bit more complex carbohydrates, but all in all carbohydrates are gonna be broken down into glucose in the body. So really, really trying to stay away from the sucrose, the fructose, and also the lactose as well. Uh, they're a little bit more simple sugars or simple carbohydrates. Um, and we're gonna be sticking still with more of the complex carbohydrates or the polysaturides in our diet to still have our carbohydrates. So there we go. I think we had a pretty successful shopping haul. We got a lot of good foods. We made sure to stick with our list so that way we wouldn't buy anything unnecessary in ones that contain sugar. So we're gonna be making a lot of different meals. We're gonna have this food available and it's gonna make it a hell of a lot easier to stay on the path of no sugar. Me and Buff Boy are at the grocery store. We have made a list ahead of time. It's always good to game plan. And especially on something like this, a challenge where you gotta go zero sugar, you need to be very careful. So we have our list, we're all ready, and now it's time to start collecting breakfast, lunch, dinner, and some snacks. Are you ready, Buff Boy? Yeah. Yeah. It's time to shop, and of course our main priority here is to stay sugar free. Thankfully, in modern times, it's getting easier and easier to fashion a specific diet to your liking. And there's a lot of great options, but of course, as I mentioned before, it really helps to game plan. I went ahead and used a calorie tracking app just to get a few different suggestions. There's some things that had sugar, which I didn't expect it to, so they were off the list. So I built myself 
breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I kept designing it until I was finally sugar free. You can find the list here. These are all the ingredients I'm gonna be purchasing, and then I'm gonna make a variety of tasty meals throughout the rest of the week. In regards to my liquid diet, of course I'm gonna be having plenty of water, but I'm also gonna be grabbing some coffee. We don't wanna go ahead and sweeten it. That's where you really start to find a lot of the calories, a lot of the sugar, so I'm just gonna be having it black, maybe having a little bit, you know, throw a dash of pea protein in there, which always makes it just a little bit tastier, but it went pretty easy since we game plan beforehand. We're gonna grab everything one after another. I got my helper here, Buff Boy, and We've got what we need, so now it's time to go home and start whipping up all the deliciousness. Yeah. In 2005 to 2010, the average percentage of total daily calories from added sugars was 13%. CDC.gov. My breakfast each morning is staying pretty similar. I'm sticking with eggs, turkey, bacon, but sometimes I'll switch things up and instead of my oatmeal, I'll go with some potatoes. So it makes it pretty simple, I think, to stick with very similar meals. You're very used to making it. It's easy, it's quick, and you know you like it and it tastes good. But making those slight changes, let's say instead of doing oatmeal, you do potatoes, it can make all the difference. So that way the meals don't get too stale. You are making small changes to make it always interesting and that way you look forward to the meals that you eat. I'm gonna be making mac and cheese with turkey, bacon, and spinach. I've been having it recently because I've been trying to uh, get some more calories into my diet. I'm thinking about upping them over the winter, doing a little bit of a bulk, and I was very happy to see that there was no sugar at all contained within this recipe. So that's exactly what I'll be making today. It's very easy to do. It gets you a lot of proteins, some fats, and of course the great thing is, there's no sugar, so we're making that right now. It's very filling, it's super delicious. Oh yeah. These are my little helpers in the kitchen. The only problem is they really haven't learned to help yet. Their heart's in the right place though. Those are strawberries by the way, not Hannibal Lecter's daughter. <laughs> I did not take that from my children's diaper pail. So we are missing a few key ingredients in these tacos. Cheese, onions, and salsa. Now cheese is gonna have a little lactose in it. The tomatoes from the salsa are gonna add sugars and onions are a little higher in sugar as well. But hey, we're still having tacos. And the good thing is we still can add salt. So we're adding some taco seasoning to the beef. So I still feel like that these tacos are gonna be pretty delicious. And hey, if you can have tacos on a diet, then I feel like you're still winning. So there we go, lunch is done. It was a very simple meal to make. It didn't take long at all. Now it's time to finish off the rest of today. Confessions of a former fat kid. When I was growing up in the late 90s, there was a big trend in snacks and that was fat free. So you would go to the store and those were really the ones that stuck out to you because you had been conditioned to think fat free equals healthier for you because fat makes you fat. Well, due to that, you would see tons and tons of snacks. They would all say fat-free. They'd look very enticing and be very colorful. You didn't even take a moment to look at the back to notice that usually the first ingredient was sugar. So instead of the fat, you were simply replacing it with sugars. And since it had no fat, usually they would just double up the sugars. So as a kid, I would constantly find myself gravitating towards those, thinking in my mind they were healthier, and little did I know, I really wasn't doing myself any favors. In fact, in some instances, it was probably worse for me. So thankfully, as people continue to become more educated, that's a little bit less of the case as far as seeing things that say such as fat-free, but you'll always notice those trends. So that's one thing that I've learned the older I've gotten, is just take a moment to look at the ingredients list and make sure they haven't just replaced one thing with another. The United States ranks as having the highest average daily sugar consumption per person, followed by Germany and the Netherlands, with the lowest daily average belonging to India, the Washington Post. You always get a little nervous when you're trying a new diet and then you're throwing in some intense workouts in, in the process, you're wondering about your energy levels, how you're gonna be able to keep up. We've done many different ones at this point, keto, carnivore, vegan, and they all feel a little different. And having zero sugar is no different. 
My body feels really good at the moment. I'm very pumped because the great thing is I'm still able to have carbs, but I'm just not having a lot of those simple sugars. So I'm not really noticing the crash, but I'm still feeling very full. So we're about halfway through our workout at this moment and I'm keeping up. I, I was a little nervous on the first one. We started off with deadlifts. We immediately superset it with the pull-ups and you're a little wary in the beginning, but the more we're getting into this, the better I'm feeling. I feel really pumped and sugar, sorry, but you're overrated. <laughs> with an experiment such as this, the time or the length of time that you do it can really matter. For instance, when we did keto, we did it for a full 45 days because sometimes you need that amount of time to begin to see the results. And for us personally, just doing this for one week, it's not so much about body composition changes because in that period of time, really the only thing you could expect maybe is to lose some water weight in the process. So for us, the zero sugar was much more about energy levels because that's something that I've really struggled with in the past. And I basically nailed the culprit in a lot of cases to be sugar. And it's not necessarily cutting sugar down to zero, it's just keeping it moderate. So this is very interesting um, to keep the carbohydrates but cut most of the added sugars out. I'm feeling it, I'm enjoying it quite a bit and it's definitely something that I wanna continue to do in the future because I'm a big fan of what it's done to my overall energy levels and just my basic mental mindset. And you may have noticed Brandon kept his hat on during pullovers. I got, that, I got a little nub in the back. <laughs> He's got all the tricks. No, I don't got the I don't got the nub. When you don't got the nub, um, your hat goes yub yub. <laughs> <laughs> it's dinner, and we really wanted to focus on keeping everything as tasty as possible. When you subtract sugar completely, you got to get a little creative. And thankfully, due to the rise of crusts such as cauliflower, we can get away with making a pizza. And I think it's pretty unanimous that everyone loves pizza. I know I do. So we're going to be making it sugar-free, which is really exciting. Yeah. Preparing some uh, dinner now, and we're going to be doing some top sirloin steaks, also some potatoes and some greens with that. We just sliced up the potatoes, added some seasoning, and we put them in the oven to roast for about 30 to 40 minutes, kind of depending. Uh, you just look at them and see if they're golden brown, and that's when you know they're done. And we're gonna be searing the top sirloin steaks just on the pan, the stove top, and we're gonna be adding a little bit of garlic, so we're just kind of cutting that up right now. Add a little bit of extra flavor, and then with the greens, we're just gonna have like a mixed green salad kind of thing, um, just to kind of tie everything together to make sure we have our greens, we have the carbohydrates from the potatoes, and we have the fats and the proteins from the steak. So again, a very well-rounded diet with no added sugar. There we go, dinner is done, and we didn't add any dressing, we didn't use any ketchup, so when it came to condiments, we pretty much kept the food as it was. Of course, we added a little bit of spices, like salt and pepper, uh, just to add a little bit of savoriness or umami to the steak and also the potatoes. I think all in all, this dinner was quite the success. Very delicious, very filling, and very nutritious. Confessions of a former fat kid. Something that proved to be a stumbling block for me in my teens and it actually even evolved into my 20s was liquid calories. You don't really realize just how much is in a drink. It's sometimes easy to forget that you're drinking so much sugars when in actuality there's certain sodas that are just, I mean, there's just as much sugar as water. It's kind of mind blowing really when you realize how much they pack into one of those things, especially if you're having multiple a day like I was as a kid. And as I got into my 20s, that evolved into coffees because I would have them in the morning, I would get them sweetened, and I had no idea it was just absolutely packed to the brim with sugars. So that's something that you wanna keep an eye on when you're drinking a lot throughout the day. Of course, you wanna drink plenty of water, but if you're drinking other things as well, you wanna keep just a good eye out for it because sometimes doing something simple such as just cutting those liquid calories out of your diet can make all the difference in the world and you can see great results having just done that. In 2008, 91% of American children from ages 6 to 11 were consuming as much as 60% of their daily calories intake from sugar-sweetened beverages. Harvard School of Public Health. It is the end of the week, and that means it is also the end of our zero sugar experiment. 
This was an interesting one because in the past we would follow diets that were more defined such as keto, carnivore. With this one, we just basically said, hey, we're taking all sugars and we're just cutting them out. And it was something that we wanted to test for a week, but it's definitely not something we're gonna go ahead and continue to do because as we mentioned earlier in the episode, we're big fans of sugar which occurs naturally such as in blueberries, Brussels sprouts and more. Of course, really the conclusion we came to was added sugars are the real culprit because there's so many prepackaged foods that have those added sugars. It really adds up over the day and then all of a sudden you're having really much more than you thought you were. They're pretty sneaky little bastards. So what we learned from this episode is we're really gonna keep an eye on those added sugars. Nothing beats whole foods. Of course, you can throw in some of your favorites as well. There's nothing wrong with that, but really, it's all about moderation. Sometimes it seems a little boring, but at least for me and Brandon, it's definitely what works. So hope you enjoyed this video. Let us know some more diet experiments you may want to see in the future. And until next time, ooh, stay buff. Yeah. So, uh, how's everything? You good? You good? You good? Good. Good. Stay buff. <laughs> <laughs>